Tonga, our Father Archbishop, Geri Kibarabara, all the bishops that are here, our fathers of faith and mothers who are present today, we always feel very honored that when we make an invite, you are always coming. And I can see today you even have sons. And that means that uh, we are having a nation that has fathers who are managing the succession management. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm very sure that we have a future. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking and I'm seeing a time and a season where God is going to take us even to higher dimensions and to higher greater faith. As you have already had the concern that Jesus, when he was living, he was wondering whether when he comes back, he will find anyone having the true faith. And that is our concern today too, because we are Christians. Many are nominal Christians. We say we are a Christian country, 85%. But when you see all the things that are happening, it is the Christian who is doing it. And uh, I think uh, today I felt it was very important because you prayed me here. I didn't want to be here. I think uh, like uh, this man who wanted to marry the, the king, who wanted to marry the son, the daughter to one of the people who are most courageous. And there was this, this young man who are there and one just swims across the crocodile uh, what invested pool and comes out and people ask him, why did you do that? Why did you risk? He said, I was pushed. I was just uh, struggling to get out so that the crocodiles don't uh, eat me. I was not going to marry this girl. I was not risking for the girl. But nevertheless, he got to the other side and uh, he married the girl. And I feel like that young man today. <laughs> Where I'm standing, I think it is not the place I should stand. It's only by grace that I stand here. And your grace is the bishop. I honor you and the anointing that is upon you. And even to allow me to be here on this national altar, I feel greatly honored and I thank God that at this time and season, I can be here. And with your covering, I feel safe. Archbishop Morandi, you have just said that, uh, you know, <laughs> you need to know who the father is. My father just sits right in front of me. That is my father. He's my spiritual father for the last 21 years. And I tell people, when it comes to mother's fathers, I don't joke with mothers, fathers. I honor and respect fathers because if you want to progress and if you want to break through and to have easy life, just recognize, honor, respect, and reverence fathers. Just that. Because even when God was speaking, he did not speak to Jacob or Isaac on their own behalf. He said, your father Abraham, you know, Isaac. It was all about fathers. And therefore, I know you carry the blessings. And that is why when we stand on this uh, national altar, I know when the fathers pray, the father in heaven will listen and he will answer concerning this nation. This is a nation we love. This is a nation that should progress. This is a nation that is so endowed with both material and human resource. We ought not to be poor country. But I know with the richness in the fathers, in the richness of the sons, 
because they are here and i know whatever is happening i know the atmosphere is right for prayers that is why i called and if i can allow me to just read from luke 22 if we read from luke 22 from verse 28 says you are those who have stood by me in my trials and i confer on you a kingdom just as my father conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at the, my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel and then he go, continues to speak to a specific disciple there and says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to shift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And I think Jesus was looking at this time when the church has been conferred to be the one that is establishing the kingdom of God upon the earth. And sometimes we find ourselves in the situations that we are in. Just like a society, you find even in a family, there are going to be rogues in there. We are going to have people who think differently and act differently. That does not mean the church, all of it, is rotten. There are still good people in it. So Jesus has conferred the power and authority of his kingdom upon the church today. It is upon us and it behooves us and because I know the, Father is, the fathers are here. That's like Jesus had been conferred the kingdom, he conferred the same to the church and the body of Christ. And it is up to us to make everyone come and sit on that table. And you, as fathers of this land, are the ones who are sitting on those thrones to be able to judge the church and all denominations that are within the body of Christ. And perhaps it is time that you thought on the way forward so that all those who are going waywards, they are your sons, they are your daughters, there is a way that you can be able to bring them back to alignment because there is a need. Any place where there, is no, there are no rules, there are no regulations, there are no safety guards and there are no checks and balances and there is no one to check which direction people are going it is likely some of them will go outside the alignment and i believe as we come here god will help you so that you sit on those thrones because if the church then would sit on the throne to tell the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, I believe even now, the church fathers. And those God has endowed and conferred the power and the authority to do so, will take their position and be able to redirect those ones who are losing direction. Finally, he says, Simon, Simon. This is what makes me really fear. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked. Who had he asked? He must have asked God. Has asked to sift all of you. This time is all of you. To sift the entire church like wheat. But Jesus personalized it to Peter and said, but I have prayed for you. I know Jesus prayed for the church for this time that our faith shall not fail. That our faith will remain and we are the ones who are going to strengthen 
our brothers and sisters who are scared out there. Those who do not even see the end of the terminal. You are the light and you are the salt. Because when a father speaks, children get courage and they get strength. Children get the cover and they feel protected. When the children are afraid, they can do very bad things because they fear to be destroyed. But when a father just comes in, you find the children start to settle. Just like the child who was in the plane and the father was a pilot. Even when there were storms, the other people were panicking. But the child was saying, I'm not panicking because my father is the pilot. I'm not panicking myself because I know these fathers are steering the church to the right direction. I know these fathers are praying. I know you have a cover over the body of Christ. And that's why when we gathered today, I knew we are under a cover. And because Jesus prayed for us, way before time, our faith will not fail. Thank you very much.